What's going on guys, Brandon again, and today I'm bringing you a new War Thunder video of the P-40 Kittyhawk. Now the P-40 is one of my favorite planes from World War II, I have a few, and this one is just one of my favorites. I remember going to the Warhawk Museum down in Nampa, Idaho, and seeing a P-40 for the first time, and oh my god, this plane is just so sexy. But that variant was a P-40 Warhawk, not the Kitty Hawk. but they still look visually similar, and they are just amazing looking planes. But let's go ahead and jump right in this video and start talking talking about the P-40 in War Thunder. Now the P-40 sits at tier 2 with the 3.3 battle rating. Now you might be asking yourself, why should I pick the P-40 over say the P-39s, the P-38s, or the F-6F-3 Hellcat? Now, if you want my honest opinion, I would actually pick the P-38s or the F-6F-3 Hellcat, but the P-40 just has something about it that I really like. Now the funny thing about this plane and comparing it to the Hellcat According to Gaijin logic, the F6F3 Hellcat has a lower battle rating at 3.0 than the P40, which has a 3.3 like I said before. So what does make this plane better? Okay, so the P40 has 6 12.7 Browning machine guns with an odd ammo count coming out 1,686 rounds of ammunition. And now I'm going to tell you right off the bat, ground attacking is not this thing's mojo. You should not go and ground attack with it. It is not enough ammo in my opinion. But you can try it if you want to. Just slap on that ground attack ammo and go right out there. So I'm limiting this down strictly to a fighter rule, not a ground attacking rule whatsoever. Now as for the max speed, it stands at 585 kilometers an hour. Now this is faster than the BF-109s at this tier. I think one of the BF-109s top speed ranges from 525 to 577 kilometers an hour, which then leaves the Focke Wolf A1, which has a top speed of 609 kilometers an hour, I believe. And I'll go ahead and convert that to miles per hour for you guys so you don't have to struggle to understand that. As for the Japanese, you're never going to have to worry about the A6Ms. I just recommend that you use your speed to get away from them. The only worrisome factor that comes out of the Japanese is the Ki-61s. If you remember, I did a video over those guys, and they have excellent energy retention. So if you're coming out of a dive, they're going to stay right with you. Even though their max speed isn't quite what yours is, I believe their max speed ranges from 557 to 572. Now, next thing is, is this a squad-orientated plane? And I really do think it is. The problem with this plane mainly comes into the ammo count. Normally, the planes that I fly have a higher ammo count or pack a more powerful punch, like the P-38 or the Hellcat. So what I really recommend that you do is you fly out with a wingman, just try to get a group of two or four if you can in your squad, and really double up on your kills. And what I mean by doubling up on your kills is if you've seen my boomerang video, then you know what a straight line formation is. Just follow up in a straight line and just double up on your kills. And as you can see right here, my teammates are really helping me out. I had someone right on me. As soon as we engaged somebody and we split, even though they were after somebody, they broke off and they came back and they saved my ass, which is very important. Never overcommit to a kill. Never have tunnel vision. And when I mean never overcommit and never have tunnel vision, is if you clearly see a squad mate with another player on him, go down there and save him. Break off of your engagement and save him. It's only going to make matters worse as if your teammate gets killed and you can't kill the guy that you're on. Then you're going to have two guys bouncing around you and it's going to be very hard to score the kill. Also really quick, it would probably be really important if I touched on this. As for maneuverability, let's take a look at the Japs first. If you're going to try to outmaneuver a Jap, never ever ever try to outmaneuver an A6M. It is just not going to work. As for the KI-61s, like I was saying before, very excellent energy retention planes. They'll stay with you in a dive. However, I do believe you can either stay with or outturn a KI-61. It has really gone both ways whenever I've gone up against a KI-61. Sometimes I'm able to outturn them, and sometimes I'm able to just barely stay with them, but still manage to score the kill on them. And by the way, guys, I do know that the KI-61s are actually pronounced the Key 61s I don't know why, but I have some strange fetish which is calling them the KI-61s. That's just the way I say it. Bear with me. Try not to get mad at me. That's just the way I pronounce it, even though I do know it's called the the key 61s. As for the Germans, I have easily outmaneuvered all the German planes, like the BF 109s, the Focke Wolf 190s. This plane can outmaneuver them. As for the other nations I didn't mention, like the British and the USSR, I think that you guys can pretty much figure out what you can outmaneuver, what you can outrun, just based off by the information that I gave you here. But I think that pretty much sums up this video, so if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down in the comments, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Also guys, I'm starting a new week of uploading here, I'm just going to try out a new schedule that I'm working with, so hopefully the new schedule works and we'll see where it goes from there. 
But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. My name's Brandon, and as always, have a nice day.